The following is a Pecha Kucha I'm providing in honor of May 12, 2021, MECFS International Awareness Day. This format gives me 20 slides that change automatically every 20 seconds. The Pecha Kucha begins on the next slide. Today, I'm going to tell you the story of a devastating disease that's invisible to many. The disease often starts with what seems to be an ordinary flu-like illness a typical viral illness that many of us have had but have recovered from after a few days of bed rest. But this illness doesn't go away in a few days. You feel as if you have run a road race despite having merely been lying in bed. You have muscle aches, joint pain, and headaches. You wake up from sleeping unrefreshed. You have intestinal disturbances and become extra sensitive to odors and sounds. Even more mysteriously, you find you can't sit up or straighten up without becoming dizzy. Standing up, sometimes your eyes black out and you feel faint, a phenomenon you later find out is called orthostatic intolerance. You also feel mentally foggy. You can't concentrate as you did before and your short-term memory is poor. After months and years go by, you develop a steady state level of low activity you can tolerate. If you do anything out of the ordinary, which for some people is getting up to take a shower, for others going out to shop for groceries, for some to work more than a couple hours a day, you pay for it the next day in the form of increase in all your symptoms, often sending you to bed. Repeatedly, you visit doctors in the hope of finding what's wrong, but blood tests come back normal. No obvious reason for all these symptoms. One survey showed it's not unusual for victims of the disease to visit 20 different physicians and go undiagnosed for an average of five years. Many physicians faced with a patient reporting fatigue and pain, but no abnormalities on routine medical tests will diagnose the patient with depression or other types of mental illness. Patients are often told it is all in their mind and are referred to psychiatrists. Parents of children who are too ill to attend school are told that they have school phobia as the cause of the somatic symptoms. Estimates are that there are more undiagnosed than diagnosed victims of myalgic encephalomyelitis, also named chronic fatigue syndrome, and now most often referred to as MECFS. Fortunately, more physicians are becoming aware of this disease. Unfortunately, there are very few MECFS expert physicians to which patients can be referred, and most have hundreds on their waiting list. While obtaining a diagnosis is a relief, it's not a relief for long. Patients now discover that their prognosis for recovery is quite poor. There are no FDA approved drugs specifically to treat the disease, and it's difficult to prove their disability to obtain insurance payments or social security. Some patients become homeless. What is the reason for this lamentable situation? One is the lack of research into the cause of the disease, which has much less funding from NIH and other agencies worldwide than for other serious diseases, such as multiple sclerosis, which affects fewer people. An estimated 2 million people in the US suffer from NECFS. But research that has been done shows that there are indeed biological norm abnormalities that can be detected, but these require sophisticated analyses or expensive tests not usually performed in routine testing laboratories. For example, while ordinary blood tests are informative, mass spectroscopy has revealed altered concentration of metabolites indicating disturbed metabolism. Research analyses of immune function reveal that natural killer cells, which destroy cancer cells and cells infected by viruses and other pathogens, are less active in MECFS patients than in healthy people. Some patients report new susceptibility to infections or loss of control of the chronic viral infections that all of us acquire in childhood. Modern gene sequencing methods reveal that the composition of the gut microbiota in most MECFS patients differs from that of healthy people. The microbial ecology of the gut is disturbed in MECFS, possibly causing inflammation and abnormal concentrations of bacterial metabolites in the blood, which can affect the brain and physiological functions. Cardiopulmonary exercise tests, which monitor heart and nervous system function as well as muscle physiology, demonstrate the phenomenon of post-exertional malaise. If an MECFS patient performs an exercise test one day, the next day they're usually unable to perform it as well while patients with other diseases repeat their test results 
from one day to the next. Defects in regulation of heart rate or blood pressure can be seen in many ME-CFS patients, especially adolescents and young adults undergoing a tilt table test. This test can explain why some patients become dizzy or faint when they attempt to stay upright in a chair or to stand up. The, the metabolism of white blood cells from some ME-CFS patients differs from healthy individuals when the function of mitochondria, the powerhouses of the cell, are assay. Altered energy metabolism in white blood cells might explain why the immune system of people with ME-CFS doesn't work properly. Energy generation defects might also occur in other parts of the body. Brains of ME-CFS patients have been examined in, in research institutes by magnetic resonance imaging and have been shown to have abnormal level of metabolites or abnormal structural features. These changes might be related to the patient's sensation of fatigue and inability to concentrate. Detection of most of these abnormalities is still in the realm of research rather than something that can be routinely ordered when a patient shows up at a doctor's office. Most physicians would not consider expensive tilt table testing or brain imaging when someone arrives complaining of unexpected fatigue. Another problem is that none of the known abnormalities are present in every MECFS patient. So right now, the best way to identify an ME-CFS victim is from a set of symptoms as described by a National Academy of Medicine report. Anyone with new fatigue, unrefreshing sleep, and post-exertional malaise who also either has cognitive problems or orthostatic intolerance should be diagnosed with ME-CFS. This combination of symptoms is characteristic of the disease. What is desperately needed for ME-CFS patients is a simple diagnostic test using readily available biological fluids so they don't have to rely on diagnosis from symptoms. Without objective evidence of an abnormality, many physicians and the general public will continue to assume it is all in the mind. Drug companies need an objective measure to observe whether or not a potential medicine improves an abnormal biological condition. Without a diagnostic test and effective drugs, ME-CFS patients will continue to languish, disabled and disbelieved. The Cornell MECFS Collaborative Research Center aims to identify molecular differences that can be developed into a diagnostic test.